Howdy everybody in YouTube land. This is kind of a test evaluation and review video I want to say. Which I really don't do that much on my channel. But this was kind of too cool not to. So this was sent in by Garrett's Workshop. And this is the Warp SE Accelerator. I don't think this is based off of any existing designs. It might be, I'm not sure, but this is a completely custom card. And this is an accelerator for the Macintosh SE. Now that particular accelerator is kind of unique in the way that it's designed. It's all locked up in a CPLD and all that stuff, but really the way this works is kind of cool. So from what I understand, this card has the address map of the SE and all that stuff built directly into the card. So the ROM and all of the primitive address map is done on the card. So when this thing starts up and starts to execute the overlay register, all that stuff is stored in this card. So, and the cool thing about that is when this thing needs to read in and out of ROM and execute instructions, the card does it on its own. It's like its own little computer in the card. And that's, that's actually nothing new because there's a lot of accelerators back in the day that did something very similar. They put the ROM and the RAM and all that stuff on the card. They did shadowing of the ROM to try to speed things up. You know, that kind of thing. It's not all of that uncommon. Now, from what I understand, this card is running in two different clock domains. You have the CPU domain and you have the bus domain, hence the two chips over here. Now, because of that... This thing has to write to video memory at regular intervals. In order to do that, it's, does, the CPU does not have to wait around for the video hardware to become ready. And it's the, the trick to that is, is all of these 573s here. There's a bunch of 74 573s on this board. And the reason why, it's almost like a, a right staging cache or pipeline. I forget the term that it's actually called, but... So the way it actually works is when this thing needs to write out to video memory or something like that, if if the bus for the motherboard is not ready, if it's not within the DTAC window, it will stage it up into these latches. It'll stage up an instruction, then it'll stage up a second instruction. So there's a dual stage instruction here, so it can keep flowing without slowing down the accelerator, which is kind of cool. So when the video hardware becomes ready and the DTAC on the motherboard is released, it you know throws the instruction on the bus. Clears those registers, throws an X instruction. There's a state machine that's handling all of that in the CPLD. It, it's kind of neat. And this particular setup makes it easy to control bus traffic out to timing critical things like the serial port or the IWM or the sound hardware and stuff like that. So the motherboard essentially becomes a peripheral to this card. And, and a lot of accelerators are designed that way, but... Just the way the staging works with the bus cycles and instructions is kind of neat. It's like a cache, but it's not really a cache. Because you're not caching instructions, you're caching bus rights. That's how this works. And I am assuming that it's based off the DTAC and stuff like that. So if the, the board's not ready and the DTAC is being held because of a previous bus transaction, or if it's refreshing the video hardware. And that's the thing about vampire video memory, is memory access between video refresh and the system has to be interleaved right because you're writing out to video memory but if you're trying to write to memory as it's being refreshed or if it's being read out to the screen it, it has to wait the cpu has to wait and that's where these come into play because this allows the cpu instruction to execute and then move on to the next instruction while the memory is still being refreshed or drawn on screen so then when it becomes available it clocks itself out and moves on so it's neat it's it, it's supposed to boost performance and stuff like that but uh as far as the other operations of this thing i'm not sure i think these are the roms that this contains a copy of the se rom so we'll see there we got some ram up here too where things are cached um but yeah it's neat i think we should go ahead instead of all of this theory and talking we should just pull out a machine I need to get it set up with the proper test utilities because I want to do some benchmarks before and after 
putting this in and I want to run some software and I want to see how that compares against the stock machine. So without further ado, let me get some stuff set up with this. All right, so before I can actually put the accelerator card in, I've pulled out a Macintosh SC Super Drive and I need to get a baseline of this unit. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start up speedometer version 3 here. Um, again, I don't have a baseline of this thing, so we're going to have to make one. So color test system info, anyways, we'll just go on. So we've got a Mac SE, we're running a 68,000, no MMU, just basically bone stock, nothing nothing special running system software 7.1 so what we should do is let's see system comparison see what we have pull the machine records all right okay so we need to compare this with an se so according to an se this is what we should have now, we're going to go ahead and do a full systems test, which is going to take a long time, so I want to pause the video. Uh, all right, so I want to test the drive. So to cheat a little bit, I'm going to use the Blue Scuzzy because it, it does have an internal hard drive, but I'm using the Blue Scuzzy as a bootstrap with all this software on it. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. And we're going to see how this guy works. So, in theory, we're comparing it, according to this, it's being compared to a Macintosh Classic, so everything should be a 1.0. So, in theory, the Mac Classic and the SE are basically the same machine. It's the Classic, if you look at the logic board schematic, the Classic is essentially a cost-reduced version of the Macintosh SE. So just that which I find strange um, that scored a point eight when it's supposed to be a 1.0 but then again I don't know what the baseline was was it on system 6 was it on system 5 I mean I don't know right now I'm running system 7 so that could be cutting in and causing performance impacts I'm not sure but let's do a baseline and see what we get so might as well pay attention to this mesmerizing video test otherwise you can just fast forward wow that is not not the fastest it is that's for sure kinda pokey This camera does a decent job with the refresh compared to the phone, anyways. Yeah, that's a bit slow. Yeah, point eight eight three. Yeah, that's kind of low. I'm not. I'm not getting. I should. That's weird because it should be pretty much the same as a classic. It should be one. Let's see what the disc measures. Now I'm using a blue scuzzy. The disc should be above one, anyways. It is. It is. Only barely, though. All right, we're going to let this guy run, and we'll come back with all of the results. All right, well, so far we're, we're scoring under the mark here. Now, it's close enough because it says Mac Classic should be 1.0, but we're not getting that quite. Um, now, this might actually be normal because, remember... Who knows how this was attested originally. It could have been from System 6, different, slightly different scenarios. System 7 is kind of heavy for a 68,000 machine, so it's possible System 7 is consuming too many 
system call resources because the way the system software works every running application has still has to forward all the events through it for every other application it's like it, it's crazy but anyways um so i mean we're not doing too bad once all this completes we'll have a better baseline it's taking a very very long time to do floating point operations including the fast Fourier transform it's still a floating point operation so when we move on to integer it should be a whole lot quicker all right it says all the tests are done let's close you out and you out see what we have here so this machine performs just under the typical se um i don't know it, it's it could be because of how it was set up originally so what we need to do is we need to save that save machine record enter any special about your system stock se oops so we're going to do that I'll choose a new one. You know what? Actually, we're just going to save into the existing one because why not? Some stock. All right. So that means, in theory, this should be stored as there it is. All right. We're good to go. Now, Time to install the accelerator and see how it goes. But before I do, I kind of want to see how this machine like opens files and stuff like that. So I mean, it's not terrible, I guess. It's kind of slow, but not, you know. So, let's see how long it takes to open that file. Yeah, we're good. Alright, we'll quit you. Alright, so we're going to shut you down. And we're going to put the accelerator into it. I like the attention to detail with the design because it snugs the RAM directly. Probably leave this accelerator in here. I don't know yet exactly if I want to or not. I don't know. We'll see. Plug in our hard disk drive. Maybe. That is, that is a weird, foul spot to get to. Alright, let's get this fired up. I'm already starting to notice the speed difference. Yeah. Just doing that. Oh yeah, I'm already noticing it. Alright, so let's run the software. Is that the one I just modified? Uh, yes, it is. Alright. So, let's see. System comparison. La, 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 la. We're going to compare it against the SE stock that we just did. Run all tests.
desktop. We're going to use the blue SCSI again for the comparison. Here we go. Whoa. That is a big difference. That is that is an order. That is like four yeah, that's a four CPU four times faster than what it was originally. That's kind of impressive. Actually, that's really impressive. It's still a sixty-eight thousand CPU. disk is only an edge faster but again we're bottlenecked by the main SCSI bus yeah that's that is an order of magnitude different uh, I'm impressed actually it makes an SE actually usable now granted it's still a 68,000 it's just running much faster I don't know what the actual clock speed of that 68,000 is I think it's 16 megahertz but it might be 20 I'm not sure the thing about this software, it doesn't actually tell you what the clock speed it's running at, I think. So, anyways, we're going to let this run and we'll be back when it's complete. But already, I noticed a significant difference. Yeah, this thing is just slamming it. It's running up to four times faster. Because if we're getting this 1.0, yeah, it's running to up to almost four times faster than the on-board hardware. That's impressive, honestly. I don't know, I don't have any other accelerators in that class. I don't have any more 68,000 accelerators. So I don't know, I don't have anything to compare it against. I do have a radius accelerator, I think. But it's an 030, so it's not really a fair comparison but I don't know we'll see oh even the four-year transforms took 56 versus the 200 some odd yeah we're, we're still running almost four times faster across the board that is seriously impressive all right all tests are done what do we have 3.3 3.3838 and then, wow, that's actually really, really good. Huh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't think it did any of these other tests. FPU, because we don't have any FPU or anything like that, so. But yeah, we're we're we smashed it. We we definitely smashed it with that accelerator. Uh the next thing I need to do is I need to grab some floppy disks and I want to do a format of an 800k and a 1.4 mag disk because the other thing we need to test for is accelerators need to be mindful of the timing of strict timing requirements such as the disk controller. We know the SCSI controller works fine because everything's going there. But we need to check the disk controller to make sure that the SWIM or the SWIM chip will handle diskettes properly because that's one of those critically timed things that the CPU needs to wait around for. So let's get that setup prepared. I'm gonna save this benchmark to be recalled later. Perfect. Okay, so. First thing I want to do is I want to check the sound to make sure everything is working properly with that. Now this still doesn't gain us color quick draw support, but you know. No quack. Aha. Ooh, yeah, nope. 
There's a bug there. Yeah, see, that's what I, that, that was. That's what I mean. We got to do tests like this. So this accelerator does not work with audio playback properly. Ooh, oh yeah, it just crashed. <laughs> yep. Nope. That's a bug. So we're gonna have to write that down. All right. Let's try this again to make sure I didn't click something too fast or something here. Yeah. Work that time. Oh, yeah. It seems to lock up after I play it more than two or three times. Well, that's not working. It'll probably crash out and reboot here. Yeah, that's not going to work. Well, that was an interesting crash. All right, so the sound test failed. It does the same thing every time you reboot. So the next thing I want to do is I want to format two floppies here, an 800K and a 1.4 meg. So let's start with an 800K disk and format that. So we're going to do a format, make sure that works properly. Nope, that is a no. Nope. So this accelerator is not respecting motherboard timings that are timing critical. Which I had a suspicion because most accelerator manufacturers have to take that into account. Uh, so that didn't work. Let's try the 1.4 mag. Alright, so it reads it. Let's see if we can erase it. Yeah, that one's working. It's entirely possible this is a bad disc. So uh, let's uh, let that do its thing. Moment of truth right here. If this works well, I'm going to try the 800K again, but if you first you don't succeed, you grab another disc and try again. So let's grab another disc here. And that's the problem with these discs is, who knows, they've been sitting for years. Yep, it formatted a 1.4 megabyte MFM disc. But I think GCR requires that specialized encoding. All right, so we know we can format 1.4 meg disks, no problem. So let's try another one of these and see what happens. Oh, that one's detected. Okay, let's uh, erase that one. Maybe I got a bad disk. Erase. Nope. That is a no. It will not format a GCR encoded disk yet. Nope. And that's just it. GCR timing is critical. So that that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. So 800K disks are a fail. That doesn't work. Um, and sound is a fail. So there's clearly some bugs that need to be worked out. But that aside, the performance of that accelerator is quite amazing. It's really, really fast. He's just got a few little bugs to work out. Um, I think just for rounding off this video, I have one more accelerator I can try. Let's do some comparisons with that. I think it's an 020 or an 030 accelerator. So let's do some comparisons there and see uh, how that stacks up along with trying to format discs and play sounds again. So before I switch to the Radius Accelerator for testing, I wanted to say also that the Warp SE, even though it's in beta stage when you have those weird little bugs, this project is fully open source. I don't know what the license is, but there is a GitHub page. I will put the GitHub page in the description below so people can check it out. So if someone 
you know, the, the more people that are collaborating on the project, the better, because the floppy drive issue and the sound issue, you could look in the Verilog for the CPLD and fix it. It's all right there. It's open source. And that's what makes this project amazing, is that it is open source, and anyone can tinker with this, and anyone can fix it, which includes porting it over to the portable and the plus and all those other units, right? So here we go. It is open source. Now, now that we have that, which is why I really like this project, I like where it's going. Um, now we're going to move on to the uh, Radius 16 and we're going to do some of those tests. So let's try this card. Now I think this is a Radius, yeah. This isn't quite the same comparison because this is an old stock one that isn't made anymore. And it's running an 020 at 16 megahertz, so it's only double the clock speed compared to that one in there, which I think is a... I think that one's set for 25 megahertz, but I'm not sure on that, so don't quote me. So I want to try this because I'm curious what the performance is on this one versus compatibility with the floppy drive and sound and all of that stuff. So let's give this one a try. Now, this one, I've already had to replace the ROMs because there's an issue with these accelerators with certain versions of ROMs will not work in System 7. So you need the newer ROMs that do. Which this one, I'm already modified the ROMs to work in System 7. So we'll try this guy out and see how it performs. Alright, so the downside of this radius accelerator is it's impossible to get in here without bending the shit out of the chassis. Because the card is so tall and wide that you can't... This connector gets in the way. It doesn't clear. It's It's... I don't know whoever the design engineer was on that card. I mean, this is... yeah. Alright. Wow, that was difficult <laughs> to get in there. But it's in there now. So now we're going to do some performance tests on this particular card and see what we get. Alright, we didn't lose any weirdness with the ADB or anything like that. We didn't on the other card either. So let's see, what do we got here? We're just going to go ahead and... I can already tell it's not as fast. But I can also tell it's faster than what it is from stock, too. So, Alright, so let's see. Systems comparison. Pull the record. We're going to go, let's see, the Warp SC. Then, now... Let's run the tests, see what happens. Again, we're going to use the blue SCSI for a comparison test. Here we go. Will we get four times the performance, or will we get less? Almost. Almost. It's actually doing fairly well. It's entirely possible because this card here, it's not indicated what the clock speed is on this card. I don't know. It could, in fact, be a 16 megahertz card. I'm not sure. But we'll see. We're going to see where it goes. Oh, and this card has a math coprocessor, so I know the math scores are going to be higher than what we are with this other card because this other card does not have a copro. But that's okay. There's very, very few pieces of software that take advantage of the coprocessor anyways, which is okay. Looks like the disk performance is a little bit less than where we were. We're, we're running a little bit less, but not really. We shall see. We're going to let this guy run. Alright, so, I mean, we're not quite as high as the previous tests, but I'm not sure. I'm going to know for sure once I get the comparison chart shown open because uh, there's been a little bit of time since I ran both tests, so I could be mistaken. So, But yeah, I mean, we're still much faster than stock, but the, que the real question is, are we as fast as the Warp SE? I don't know. We shall see. All right, we're nearing the end here. Looks like integer matrix, everything's good. So, ooh, now we're doing an additional benchmark FPU. 
which the other car didn't do so because it wasn't detected right now this is going to be irrelevant so we're not going to use it as the basis of comparison but let's see here what did we score all right let's see 4.06 no 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 the warp sc actually beats out the radius in cpu performance the graphics is just beat out the disc is pretty much beat out i mean it's the math coprocess or the math process is actually faster but again we got an fpu so yeah 3.22 versus 3.34 so the warp se actually has an edge over the radius 16. now the wheat stones dry stones we have more computation power here but not on you know because well we probably have differences in clock speeds but you know what we're fairly comparable but overall overall the warp se beats out the radius 16. it beats it out so what it shows we have an 020 with an 81 all that stuff i'm not going to save it because it doesn't matter um the the warp se is a strong contender if they can fix the bugs then it will beat out the radius um so all right now let's do some tests let's see if the sound works without crashing Mmm, we get some glitchiness in the sound. You can kind of hear it, but at least it's not crashing. So, um, it just it goes to show you how timing critical the sound system is. Now, there's probably a radius extension to fix that. I don't know, but... At least it's not crashing. Okay. Now, let's try the floppy disk. Does it format? It does. It does. It does. So that is is working properly, it seems like. Now, the thing about GCR, it uses variable speed, variable bit rate. So the timing information for writing a GCR disk is extremely, extremely critical. So those types of I.O. operations really need to be down precise, which the Warp SE doesn't quite do yet. Crossing our fingers. Yep, it's good. No bad sectors. I mean, the discs are new, so there shouldn't be, well, new. All right, well, that works. So the one point or the 800K GCR disc formatted without a problem. All right, so where does that leave us? Well, the radius accelerator works better, of course, because it's had many iterations of design updates, ROM updates, you know, things like that. So it's not really a fair comparison here. What this video was truly about was this brand new project, the Warp SE. Now, this project is in beta. It's being beta tested by multiple people, including myself. So this actually isn't released yet, but it will be available for purchase on Tindy and you know, the usual sites like that. Now, is this thing ready for prime time? No. It's got some bugs that need to be addressed. We've got an audio bug with the sound. And even you heard the radius is not perfect either. But it doesn't crash and go crazy like this one does. So there's some bugs there we have to take care of. And then this, this accelerator is not formatting and working with GCR encoded 800K disks properly. So it does have a little bit more time to go. But as it stands, it's a really well working product as far as just the sheer horsepower that is, you know, brought to the Mac SE by itself. So we have, we're, we're beating the radius out in just about all 
performance measurements with the exception of the math side, which makes sense because the Radius has a math coprocessor. But that's not really a fair comparison. So if we take the math coprocessor out, this thing beats the Radius in raw horsepower. And this is just another 68,000. So will this gain you color quick draw support? No, but neither will the Radius. So you're not going to be able to run any application software that requires color quick draw, which is pretty much the majority of them. So you're not going to gain anything like that. All you're doing here is you're just gaining processing speed, just pure calculation speed, disk performance speed. And the disk performance brought on by this is far faster than that of the radius accelerator. But this, I think, is going to make an amazing product. We'll have to see where it goes from here. We just got to get those uh, little bit of beta bugs addressed because, again, it's in beta. We've got some problems with the floppy drive and sound. But I think we have a pretty strong contender in the modern accelerator market, the Warp SE. And this will be brought forward to the Macintosh Portable and the Plus and all of that with time, too. But for now, it's starting life off with the Mac SE. Just got some bugs to address. And... I think that's it. I, I may post a follow-up video when we get those bugs fixed so we can just retest things again. Um, but for in the meantime, this is where we're at with this accelerator. I think it's a decent product. It just needs to get some of these little glitches rounded off. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and all of that fun stuff. If you have a comment, please feel free to leave one. Until next time, guys. Thank you for watching.